At ABC Bullion, we've taken an active role in providing education services to our clients and our potential clients about the ongoing opportunity and the importance of investing and storing physical precious metals. And whilst our weekly market reports provide up-to-the-minute up the analysis of the gold price and the global economy, we wanted to launch Bullion University as a separate education initiative focusing purely on physical precious metals. How much gold is mined in any given year? What do you look for when buying or storing gold? As well as things like gold's monetary qualities and the importance of owning it as an investment asset. It's a really exciting initiative that we look forward to rolling out going forward. The first subject we're covering is what's called the stock to flow ratio and we're going to be looking at the stock to flow ratio of gold versus more traditional commodities like oil, copper and wheat. It's one of the most important concepts for investors to understand because it helps differentiate or explain why gold is in fact a monetary metal or a monetary asset rather than just another traditional commodity. The stock to flow ratio is a very simple calculation where you take the existing supply of a particular commodity and divide it by the annual production or the flow of that said commodity. So for example, if we, if we knew that there was 100,000 tonnes of tomatoes at any one time in the world and we knew that on an annual basis 10,000 tonnes of tomatoes were produced, we would end up with a stock to flow ratio of 10, meaning that it would take 10 years of current annual production to match the existing supply. If we think of traditional commodities like oil, copper or wheat, the only reason that we produce or harvest or mine for these things is because that they have value in consumption. So oil forms the basis of petroleum products, copper is used to conduct electricity or we use wheat and grains to make cereals and pasta. So the stock to flow ratio for most of these commodities is actually either at or below one, meaning that the annual production of these commodities is actually greater than the existing supply. This makes perfect sense as there'd be no point in producing these things unless we were going to consume them. Gold is very different to all other commodities. Nearly all the gold that has ever been mined across the course of human history has actually just been added to the existing supply. We don't actually consume the gold that we produce. In fact, if you think that there's roughly 175,000 tonnes of gold known to be existence, in existence today, and we only produce roughly 2,800 tonnes in any given year, we're left with a situation where the stock to flow ratio of gold is a staggering 65 to 1, meaning it would take over 65 years worth of current production to match the existing supply of gold that exists today. Indeed, there is a lot of existing gold out there. Paradoxically to some, gold is not valued as a monetary asset purely because it's scarce, because all commodities are scarce. Gold is valued as a monetary asset because the known supply, the overall supply of it, is so stable. Those 2,800 tonnes a year that, that are produced only add roughly 1.5% to the known existing supply. And even if gold mining production was to double to say 5,500 tonnes a year, and there's no chance that that will happen with ore grades declining and the cost of production going up, that would still only mean that the supply of gold was growing at 3% per annum. That is inherently safer and inherently more stable than the paper monetary system that we currently operate on, which can be controlled and increased purely at the whim of central bankers, a lesson that we've all seen very clearly since the onset of the GFC. Well, it's important to understand because it best highlights gold's monetary qualities and its importance as a monetary asset. As I said earlier, when we think of other commodities, we only produce them because we can consume them. We don't consume the gold that we produce, but despite that, we still go to considerable expense and considerable effort to find gold every day, then to mine it, then to refine it, and obviously store and to sell it. And as a society, we wouldn't do that unless we knew that gold still had value today. And it has exactly the same value today that it has across the millennia. That as the ultimate store of wealth and the ultimate measure of value. And those qualities have been assigned to gold through the marketplace across the course of human history. They are not qualities that were assigned to gold by governments or by central banks, nor are they qualities that can be taken away by them despite the fact that governments have chosen to abandon the gold standard. And ultimately that is why gold is still a monetary asset and it still has value today. 
The key takeaway from looking at gold stock to flow ratio is to understand that gold is not just another commodity like tin or copper or aluminium, and it is in fact a monetary asset. And the fact that it cannot be debased via money printing is why it is in fact a, the superior monetary asset and the best form of long-term savings that people can incorporate into their portfolios. Understanding gold stock to flow ratio and its monetary qualities will probably also help investors appreciate why Western central banks, despite telling us as individuals that gold is no longer money, continue to hold tens of thousands of tonnes of gold worth hundreds of billions of dollars. If it is good enough for them to invest in and hold on to, perhaps it makes sense for us as individuals to invest in some gold and hold on to it as well. To find out more about gold stock to flow ratio or indeed anything related to bullion and investing in physical precious metals, all investors need to do is go to www.abcbullion.com.au and sign up to our complimentary education series.